Music this morning. How's everybody doing? Miss Robin Smiley here with the Rise and Shine devotional. Y'all, we've made it to the end of a work week. It is Friday. Yay. And for some of us, it's payday. So how's everybody doing this morning? Good blessed morning to you, Miss Deborah Duncan Herb. Hey, Minister Sandy. Good morning. Kathy, good morning to you. I like that. Happy Friday blessings. Happy Friday blessings. Hey, my Roxy. Good morning. Miss Loretta. Good morning. Great. You guys are coming on in YouTube. We welcome you. We say good morning to you as well. Hey, Jojo, good morning. So we're going to just jump right in and pray and get to the word this morning. Father, we thank you. Ah, oh, God, you, you have brought us through to the end of another work week. Well, the normal work week, Monday through Friday. Some may work tomorrow. But we thank you, God, that you are keeping God, that you kept us, God. You protected us. You shielded us from all hurt, harm, and danger this week. You were with us. You empowered us to do what we needed to do on our jobs. And we are grateful. Father, we're grateful for another opportunity at life. Yes, God, you. It's because of you that we live, move, and have our being. It's in you that we live, move, and have our being. It's because of you that we are here this morning on this live, or even those that may catch the replay, because you touched us with your finger of love. You breathe the breath of life into us, and for that, we are so forever grateful. God, we're thankful that you desire to spend time with us. You said, enter your courts with praise and thank and, and with thanksgiving. Enter Enter into your courts with thanksgiving and praise on our hearts and our lips, God. And, and that's what we are here, just being thankful and grateful that we can be like Mary and sit at your feet and learn of you. Teach us, Holy Spirit, today what you would have us to know. Give us this daily bread, Father, that we will be um, nourished and have the sustenance that we need to get through this day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hey, Jay, good morning to you. Um, yes, new mercies. We thank him for new mercies, right? They are new. We don't have to rely on yesterday's mercies because we have new mercies for today because they are new every day. We thank him for the benefits that he bestows upon us daily, right? We have daily benefits and we are grateful. Lady Robin, good morning. All right, guys, let's jump right in. Our topic today is remember the fight is fixed remember the fight is fixed and look at me in my camouflage right let me, let me move the title look at me in my camouflage had no idea that was going to be our title today but it's so appropriate we got to remember as believers that the fight is fixed you know and yes we may be saying well, well what's the point of fighting if it's fixed because we are co-laborers with God, right? We got to remember, we still have to do our part. Saying that we have faith is not enough. What, what are you doing? Faith without works is dead. But we have to remember that the fight is fixed, right? So when we find ourselves in these spiritual battles, oh, thank you, Lady Robin. When we find ourselves in these spiritual battles, right? We can go in with confidence. We can go in knowing, okay, I, I still have to, you know, throw a few blows, right? And still have to slap um, the any up, enemy upside the head a little bit, right? Still have to get my dagger out, the sword of the spirit, but the fight is fixed. Glory to God. And so we're going to look at the devotional today from Talk to Me Jesus and um, understand why we need to remember the fight is fixed. We're going to talk about how the fight is fixed, right? And we're going to leave away from here with a mindset of victory, right? What's happened with so many of us as believers, we have this defeated mindset, right? The enemy has crept in and we haven't um, done our due diligence to fight back. And so we end up feeling defeated to an enemy who is already defeated. Our role as a believer is to enforce the enemy's defeat, right? Do you remember when you were in grade school, elementary school, junior high, high school, whenever, maybe even as an adult, right? It seemed like it was always somebody that was picking on you, always somebody that was, uh, you know, trying to mock you or had something to say about you, right? You 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 finally you know let them know who who uh, was running the show right you didn't just take it and 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 you just go in a corner and cry right you you stood up for yourself so it's the same with us as believers we 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 can't just allow the enemy to wreak havoc over our lives because that's his job 
right? We can't allow it. We have to fight knowing that the fight is fixed. We have to remember that the fight is fixed. Amen. So let's look at the devotional today and see what it has to say. That's right, Sandy. We still have to show up. All right. So good morning, Pastor Sandra. So the devotion says, I see the troubles you're facing, the problems that leap up from behind the rise in the road, the wolf poised to spring forth to attack your flock and devour your goods. God says, I see it. I see it all. I see you. I see what's happening, right? A lot of times we're going through things and we're like, God, where are you? Do you see what I'm dealing with, right? And he says, I see it. I see the troubles. I see the problems, right? I see the wolf dressed in, in, in sheep's clothing. I see it all. And then it says, oh, but dear one, you must remember you must remember whatever comes against you contends with me. The battle that we're experiencing is not about us, but the battle is about us um, not being in close connection in relationship and receiving what God has, right? He says the, the whatever comes against you contends with me, right? Well, you know, again, we go. Let's go back to being young. If you had an older sister or older brother, or you had that that person that you knew was was looking out for you, right? You let somebody mess with you, you wasn't concerned because big brother, big sister was gonna come and take care of it, right? We have God, God the Father, God Almighty Himself, who is contending with the enemy, right? The enemy may be attacking us, but really, He's contending with God, and God is saying today. I've got your back. The fight is fixed, but I need you to remember it, right? He says, take your power today and rebuke the devourer. All right. So we got our first step. We got our first instruction. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. Take your power. Do you realize, do you remember that you have power? What does Luke 10 and 19 say? It says, I have given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, right? We have the authority. It has been given to us by Jesus himself. And so we have to remember that and we have to take it. We have to, to, to pull it out of wherever we put it on, on, the, on the shelf. We have to take it off the shelf and exercise that power that God has given us. It says, take your power today and do what? And rebuke the devourer. So what? what is our power? Our words. We've been talking about that this week, right? To rebuke, you speak something against, right? So we have to stop allowing the enemy to muzzle our mouth, but we need to muzzle his mouth with the word of God, right? The word is right there on your tongue. And so we need to speak it and rebuke whatever he is he's trying to do against us. Glory to God. It says, refuse to accept the thrashing of the enemy spike tail against the walls of your house and your life. Refuse to accept, right? Yesterday, I was listening to uh, Reverend Janice Davis Steele's Bible study. I didn't get to hear all of it, but I did hear some of it. And she said, what you accept, you can expect right? If you accept something, you can expect something, right? If you accept the proposal from, you, from your, your significant other, right? You can expect a marriage, right? What you accept, you can expect. So we have to refuse to accept we, we're saying, no, not here, not today, Satan, right? We have to refuse to accept the thrashing enemy spike tail against the walls of our house and of our life, in our life, right? And that house means anything that pertains to you, not just the physical building of the house. Yeah, you know, the enemy will try to attack even that way. But the house, when you think about it, pertains to everything um, that belongs to you, your mental state, right? Your family, your finances, your ministry, your business, your job, right? Um, your children, whatever makes up your house, 
right? Refuse to accept the enemy thrashing against it, right? Remember the um, story with the big bad wolf, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. Now I hear you on, right? For one, because our house is going to be built on a foundation, on the firm foundation of what? Of the word, glory to God. So the enemy can come in, he can thrash and do all that he wants, but because we're going to rebuke him, because we're going to exercise the power of the word that is in our mouth and in our heart, <clears throat> he will not succeed. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so then uh, it says here, hurl the truth into the atmosphere and strangle the lie because your enemy is not flesh and blood. Okay, we're talking about the fight is fixed, right? When you're in a fight, you don't you don't just tap, tap, tap lightly like this. Let me get this title out of here. You don't just tap, tap, tap lightly, right? I remember my, my husband took our grandson, um, who's five, six years old, right, um, to a little uh, boxing, um, not a camp, but a workout. A um, friend of ours has a son who, ha who he has in boxing. So we said, okay, you know, let's take Aiden. This might be good for him. And he came back and said, my grandson would just barely tap the 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 thing, you know, the punching bag, right? He would barely tap it. But, you know, it was so strange because we see all of this energy and all this force coming out of him, you know, throwing things and all of this. So we're like, yeah, he want to get this energy out. But when it came to the boxing, he barely tapped it. No, when, when we're in, find ourselves in this fight, right, we don't just... Oh, well, Satan, if you don't mind, no, we use the word of God in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare it. And in whatever that situation is, we hurl it, right? We hurl it. And it's not necessarily yelling and being loud because that's not what moves the enemy. That's not what gets him out of the way. It's, it's, it's the word of God that gets him out of the way. It's, it's us first submitting to God, resisting him what with the word of God, and then he has to flee. And so it says to hurl the truth because the enemy comes in with a lie right it, he'll he'll make it so good he'll just twist it just a little bit just like he got eve but we have to come back and hurl the truth at him like jesus did it is written glory to god and when we hurl it into the atmosphere we 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 send it into the atmosphere of 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 the powers and principalities and all of those beings in high places and in wicked places, right? It's not just aimed at one, it's aimed at, at his entire crew, glory to God. And then it says, and strangle the lie. When you strangle something, right? The truth can strangle it. It just, you just hold it until it dies, right? It says, because your enemy is not flesh and blood. Your coworker may be being used your husband or your wife may be being used, but they are not your enemy. You have to see the, the root of the problem. You have to understand that, that this is a spiritual battle that you are in and stop fighting the person and start fighting um, with the spiritual weapons that God has given us. Amen. It says, I tell you today, use the fierce and undefeatable weapon of faith. There it is right there. Faith in the word works, right? Faith plus the word equals victory. If you need a formula, right? Faith plus the word equals victory. It says, I tell you today, use the fierce and undefeatable weapon of faith to combat the source of your troubles. Glory to God. That was a good introduction. I just like how God broke all of that down from the devotional. Amen. Glory to God. And um, let's see what you're saying before we look at the scriptures. Sandy says the will of God is what we have to come in alignment with. Amen. We got to get in alignment. We got to get in alignment. Amen. Yes, Reverend Stephanie, you missed it. I said I, I didn't even realize when I got dressed this morning that this was going to be our topic, but we are ready for war. Glory to God. Okay, so let's put some word on it. Let's look at the scriptures that have been assigned. The first one comes from Isaiah 41 and 13. Isaiah 41 and 13. And it says, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. So, so what 
issue, what problem, what situation are you in that maybe you have um, some timidity about? Maybe there's a hard conversation that you need to have. Remember I shared the, the other day about how my husband and I had a conversation. I don't like confrontation at all, right? So having those hard conversations for me um, brings about anxiety, right? But I had to do it. And I did it because I was like, okay, God, I need you to be with me. I need you to give me the words to say. I need you to help me um, say what I need to say in a manner in which is going to be received and it's going to be heard in whatever response. Then I need you to help me to not take offense or not be um, upset about, right? So what happened here? This scripture right here. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. So we have to remember the fight is fixed. Why? One, because God is there with us. The enemy is contending against him and God is with us in the fight. How is God with us in the fight? When we speak the word, when we speak the word and when we walk by faith. Why? Because it's without faith, we can't please him. But when we walk by faith, it pleases him. He's right there by our side. Glory to God. And so we can take confidence in whatever is coming against us that we are not in this ring alone, but the Lord himself, the Lord God Almighty, Jehovah um, Gabor, I think is, is the, the name for the <clears throat> that talks about how God is with us in our battles. Right. He is there with us in the ring. Glory to God. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to have that hard conversation. Don't be afraid um, to, to set up boundaries um, to keep your peace. Don't be afraid, right, to speak the truth in love because God is with you. Glory to God. All right. So now you guys know we had to go here. Second Corinthians 10 and verse four. We remember the fight is fixed because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right? They're not our hands. They're not guns. They're not knives, right? They're not uh, harsh words, right? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We have to remember that we have spiritual weapons to use in a spiritual battle, right? The boxers can't go in the ring and all they do is, is speaking in tongues and speaking the word of God. They have to physically fight in the ring, right? In an actual boxing match. But in the spiritual ring, right? Where there's spiritual warfare, throwing our hands in the air is not going to get the enemy off our back. It's the word of God. It's this it's, keeping on the helmet of salvation is the breastplate of righteousness is the is the belt of truth right it's the shoes that are uh, of, of peace glory to God and we're going to look at Ephesians 6 and well we only have 12 here but it says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against who principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in the heavenly places, right? Spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so we see here a hierarchy. We got principalities, then we've got powers, we've got rulers of the darkness, we got spiritual host of the heavenly places, right? There is a hierarchy. That's why I said when we hurl the word into the atmosphere, it's going to hit all of these areas, right? Because we, we have all of these things that are coming against us at one time. The enemy's like, I'm going to send a principality. That don't work. Okay, let me send some power. I'm going to send a ruler of darkness, right? Some spiritual host of weakness. He's relentless. He's not going to give up. But we just have to continue to hurl the word of God and remember that the fight is fixed. Glory to God. We are not in it by ourselves. Glory to God. That's right, Pastor Sandra. There are 365 references to fear not in the Bible. One for each day. He's already made a provision. We don't have to be afraid. And he told us, right? The battle is not yours. It's mine, right? 
Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And so all we have to do is trust him when we find ourselves in the battle. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so, um, yes, my right, so we will pay, pray for you on today. Glory to God. Father, even now, in the name of Jesus, we lift up my Roxy as she has this outpatient testing. We thank you that all is well in her body. We decree and declare right now that your word that says by the stripes of Jesus, she is and she was healed will be manifested. We thank you for the finished work of the cross that will be manifested in her body today in the test results. We decree and declare that we choose to believe the report of the Lord. And that report says she is healed. You said that healing is the children's bread. And as she is here this morning, getting your word, we thank you that she is being healed in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of fear and anxiety, and we lose the confidence of, of God himself in her in Jesus name. We thank you, Lord God, that whatever the enemy <clears throat> has been trying to tell her, we muzzle his mouth now that it will not resonate, that it will fall on deaf ears in Jesus name. But the blood of Jesus covers her and anyone else who may be dealing with health issues, um, physical issues, mental issues. We release this prayer for them as well and decree wholeness and healing in their body in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> and that's an example right there of spiritual warfare, right? I could have just said, okay, we'll pray at the end. When the enemy comes in, right, you got to know that God is, is coming in like a flood and raising the standard. When the enemy comes in, right, and tries to bring something against you, clearly that was on her mind. Clearly she wanted uh, to make sure we under we got together and we came together and prayed about it. But I didn't I didn't say, OK, we'll do that at the end. I stopped and I and I hurled the word into the atmosphere. Glory to God. So that by the time she gets to the doctor's office, glory to God, she will go in confidence. She will go knowing that the word has gone before her and that the word has eradicated every uh, negative outcome um, that, that may have tried to present itself. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you'll see here, my Roxy, other people um, providing their words of prayer for you on today. So go in, in confidence knowing that it is well. Amen. It is well with you and your test results. Amen. Glory to God. All right, so let's keep going. Our next scripture, um, and I put the wrong verse here, is actually 20, Matthew 28 and 20. This is our last scripture for this morning. It says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So I know the author really wanted us to focus on the last part, but y'all know that we can't start a scripture in the middle of a sentence. So let's just go back so we have the full clarity and the full context, because there may be a little bit more that God wants to elaborate to us um, today. Are y'all getting something today about remembering the fight is fixed? Remember, the fight is fixed. You're not in this alone. Okay, let me get here. Matthew 28. I'm going to start at verse 18. And it says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, who? The disciples. Who are we? Disciples, followers of Jesus. So he's speaking to us right now. He says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have got to know that Jesus is with you wherever he is sending you, right? Let's say you are on a teaching assignment. Let's say God has said, I need you to go live and I want you to share this experience, right? Fear not. He says, lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen means so be it. Amen in today's vernacular is like period, right? No matter what, I am with you, period. So God is saying, reminding us, remember, the fight is fixed. Why? 
because you're walking by faith for one. You're going to use the word for two, which is your power. You're going to um, have on your full armor, right? You're not going to go into the battle half dressed. You're going to have on your full armor. And I am with you. Most importantly, God says, I am with you. The battle is not yours. It is mine. But I am there with you. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to hold your right hand. And, and we're going to um, remind the enemy that he is already defeated. Yeah, it's been painful. Yes, you had to deal with some issues. Yes, you may have lost some things. Yes, he may have stolen some things. But remember my promise to you that I will restore. I will return unto you all that the canker worm and the locusts have stolen and eaten. Glory to God. There is a time of restoration. There is a time of, of reprieve that the enemy um, will not even be able to um, come in, right? He's going to be looking to try to get in. But because as Jesus said, he will find nothing in me. Why? Because you will be so full of the word. We've been talking about the word all this week. Get back in your word. Get your refill, right? We, I think that was our lesson yesterday. Fill up on the word of God. When the word is, is when you are full of the word, when the enemy comes in like that mosquito to bite you, right? The blood that he gets is going to be the word and it's not going to taste good to him. Glory to God. It's going to kill him. It's going to annihilate him because you are fully armored with the word and with faith. Remember, faith plus the word equals victory. Right. And so God is reminding us on today. The fight is fixed. We just have to remember it. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. That's right. Jehovah Rapha is the Lord our God that healeth us. So I pray that um, um, you guys got something out of this today. This is, a, this you know, I don't say it all the time, but I feel like this is a good one today to be shared with somebody um, that might need to be encouraged, somebody that may be going through and may be like, when is it going to end, right? That, that something has got to break, something has got to give glory to God. Um but I just thank God for his word on today, for even us ending this work week, you know, knowing that the fight is fixed. We just have to remember, we just have to use our faith and we have to use our use the word of God. Amen. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. Uh -huh. We thank you that we are not in this battle alone. We thank you, God, that we, as we condition ourselves, as we condition ourselves, as we work out with the word and we get spiritually fit, Lord God, no matter what the enemy throws at us, we can handle it, God, because we have our faith and we have the word of God. We thank you, Lord God that you are always with us. Even in those times where we may be a little anxious, we may be a little um, uneasy about saying or doing what we need to do. We thank you, God, that you are right there with us. You are taking us by our right hand and you're saying, I've got you. You can handle this. So we thank you that because of your word that says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us through the anointing of the anointed one. Thank you for reminding us that we can't do anything in our own strength. But when we yoke up with God, when we yoke up with you, when we yoke up with Jesus, when we yoke up with the Holy Spirit and allow him to speak to us saying, this is the way walking in it. When we follow that instruction that we can go forward in confidence. You said to come boldly to your throne of grace. We can come boldly to you in prayer, knowing that you are going to empower us and give us what we need. You're going to tell us the spiritual weapon um, that we need to apply and use in this situation. So we thank you, God. Hallelujah. That yes, the fight is fixed. We will remember that we have been given authority. We have been given power that is greater than, than the um, ability of the enemy. We choose today to stop relinquishing our power to the enemy and we take back what you have given us. We stand firm knowing that we are to take dominion over every creeping, crawling thing and everything on this earth. We take dominion 
over the, the enemy right now. We take every thought captive that is in disobedience to you and we command it to come into alignment with your will and with your word in Jesus name. Glory to God. We thank you that, that our weapons are not carnal but they are mighty through you. We thank you, Lord God. That is not by power nor by might, but by your spirit, says the Lord. So we thank you that the Holy Spirit is right here on the inside of us. The Holy Spirit is waiting to go to battle with us and for us. In those times when we don't know how to pray, we thank you that the Holy Spirit moans and groans and speaks through us on our behalf and prays the most perfect prayer. We thank you, Lord God, that the fight is fixed and we stand flat footed and tell the enemy today is over. You have lost, period, because Jesus is with us, because God the Father is with us, because the Holy Spirit is with us to see us through. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We just bless the Lord on this Glory to God. Hallelujah. Minister Sandy is asking for prayer for the schools. Father, we thank you that the schools are protected. We, we release a shield um, like a blanket of the blood of Jesus over the, from the daycare to the college campuses, God. We thank you, Lord God that our students, our teachers, our bus drivers, our, our lunchroom workers, our custodians, everyone that will be in contact with each other. Lord God, we thank you that they are covered by the blood. Even those schools that have already um, been hit with this, this large impact of the virus and are on quarantine, we decree and declare that these children are protected, these teachers are protected in the name of Jesus. That, that the name, which is greater than any name, Jesus is greater than the name COVID. Jesus is the king. He's the one with the crown. COVID may mean crown, but the crown that is on the king of kings and the Lord of lords prevails in our schools, in our homes, in Jesus' name. We thank you and we bless you for the power of the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just going through the comments to make sure I didn't miss anything this morning. So you guys have an awesome day today. If you are watching and you're in a, in a battle and you feel like when this is going to end and you haven't given your life to Jesus, we want to give you a, an opportunity to accept the perfect gift of salvation, the perfect gift of a relationship with Jesus Christ who will be with you um, no matter where you go. We just closed out with that scripture that even in the midst of whatever you're going through, when you accept him, he is right there with you to, to help you through those situations. All you have to do is repeat after me and say, Lord God, I am a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died, was buried, and is resurrected. Come into my life as Lord and Savior. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. And guess what? When you say that simple prayer, you receive the greatest gift of all, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you who is fighting on your behalf. You are now a part of the kingdom of God where, the, where the, every fight that you find yourself in, you have to remember that it is fixed because the enemy is already defeated. Glory to God. So God bless you. Um, just get connected with the local group of believers in your area. And you can join us here Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Eastern. Tomorrow is Saturday. We go live on Zoom. So for all my Zoomers, don't forget, we'll be on at 7 Eastern tomorrow. Um, and if you haven't joined us and you're interested, just check out our Facebook group, Soaring by Faith, and all the information will be there on how to join. Or feel free to email me at info at Robin Smiley, and uh, we can get the inf information to you that way. All right. Y'all have a great day. Don't forget, the fight is fixed. Keep your armor on and be ready to win with God. Amen. See you later. Bye-bye.